Welcome to the Continuum Lab. I'm Yeppe and this is Control Freak. I make a new MIDI controller in every video. I make it up as I go along using scraps that I have lying around and then I jam for a bit and record another voice for the Control Freak theme song which is what's playing right now. This is my MIDI flute. It's made almost entirely out of recycled cardboard. It uses cheap and simple components and conductive paint for the keys. I'm especially proud of the mouthpiece, which is probably the first flute breath sensor in the world. This video is all about how I made it, so let's go. In today's video I'm going to try to make a MIDI flute. And I want to just be clear about this, a flute and a whistle are not the same thing. So I had considered making a whistle which would be something like this instrument here, where you blow into the end like this. But that's not what I'll be making finally, I'll be making a flute, which is uh, quite a different instrument where you blow through this uh, kind of hole here at the top, like this. So in order to make that a reality, I have uh, gathered some, some uh, supplies that I think will be useful for this project. This cardboard tube here is left over from a roll of uh, aluminum foil, and this is obviously going to be the main structure of the flute. Then there are some uh, scrap pieces of cardboard. Then there are some scrap bits of cable here to connect everything together. Then there is a silicone tube. This is a food grade silicone tube that I might or might not need for this project. Then I have a uh, black balloon here. This is just a standard toy balloon. Then I have a rubber band in here, which I don't think I'll need, so uh, I don't know why I put it in there. Bye. And then, uh, just like last time, the main electronic component here is uh, just a 3mm blue LED and a BPW-34 photodiode. And finally, two resistors to connect those other two components. I have a 47K resistor and a 220 ohm resistor here. As I just explained before, I want to make a flute-style instrument, which means that I will be playing this cardboard tube like this. So that basically means that the breath sensor, which I developed in a previous episode of Control Freak for the MIDI Melodica, is uh, completely useless for this, because that's a breath pressure sensor, which uh, depends on a pressure chamber and uh, that being directly connected to the air pressure within your mouth. But as you can see when I play this, there is no seal between your mouth cavity or your lips and any kind of chamber here. Instead, what we need to measure is air flow. Not air pressure, but air flow. So luckily I have an idea for how you can make such a sensor and that's what I'm going to be attempting today. So that's one aspect of making a flute. The other aspect of course is that we need to have some keys that I can play with my fingers here. And for that I'm going to go with the layout which is kind of similar to my open horn MIDI system which is uh, this thing right here. Although a little bit simplified and with uh, slightly fewer keys. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to sketch those keys on there and uh, see if I can get a good comfortable distribution, uh, something like this, I think. Cool. Then I need to figure out where the uh, mouthpiece is going to go. So I still need to think a little bit about how the uh, mouthpiece hole is going to work. So I'm going to just leave that aside for a second and look at the final aspect which is missing now for the flute and that is of course the electronics. So I need to extract the uh, teensy breakout board from here. So the breakout board here is obviously too big to fit inside the flute. And so I'm simply going to make a little expander structure that I can connect this to and uh, I'm going to put that down here at the at the very end of the instrument. So now I can connect a bunch of cables to the Teensy breakout board and then simply run them in through the tube here and then uh, connect them to the individual keys all the way up the tube. And I'll make sure to seal the tube here behind the mouthpiece so that there won't be any humidity which makes its way down here uh, to the keys. So the keys here on the flute are going to be capacitive keys. The Teensy 3.2 has 12 capacitive pins and uh, let me see. I'm actually only using 11 
pins right now. Let me just put another little octave key on here. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Nice. So now I'm using 12 pins for 12 keys, and so I can just individually plug these in up here. I won't need to run it through a multiplexer. So originally I was going to use copper tape for these keys, just like I have in uh, previous builds. But I realized uh, that I actually have something very interesting lying around the shop that is going to be just great for this. Bear Conductive's electric paint. Conductive paint. Seeing as the surface here is cardboard, uh, this paint is going to stick to it really well. And uh, of course I'm going to uh, cover the keys up with some uh, transparent tape here afterwards anyway. So that's actually the first thing I'm going to do because I want the paint to dry up before I start uh, running some cables out to the keys. Cool, that's a really terrible paint job. But uh, of course it doesn't have to be pretty to work. So now I'm just gonna leave this here for a little while to, uh, to dry. I was only going to step away from this project for a few minutes to let the paint dry, but uh, then life got in the way. And so now it's a brand new day and uh, the paint is definitely completely dry. So between yesterday and today, uh, I also managed to gather the courage to get started on the mouthpiece. Uh, this is still highly experimental, so uh, I might mess this up. Here goes nothing. First thing, I need to open this up. So yeah, okay, the top part of this turned out pretty ugly and, and a little torn along the edges, the bottom side somehow turned out really nicely. Anyway, I should be able to make this work. Here comes the tricky part. And by tricky part I mean that actually I haven't really figured out how I'm going to do it yet. But um, this is Control Freak, so uh, I'm just going to jump straight in and uh, figure it out as I go along. So I want to make a kind of internal structure in the mouthpiece here, which will support the uh, components and help me to isolate them from the humidity of the breath going through there. So let's see what I can figure out. Cool, so that's the uh, inner structure here that I was talking about. Um, this rectangular channel that goes all the way through the instrument. This can now be used as a support for the uh, sensor components. Time to connect the components, but uh, I can already see that I'm going to need some longer cables here because I need to reach all the way up from the mouthpiece and all the way down to the uh, bottom of the instrument where the TNC is. Roughly something like that. I'm going to need two cables for each of these. Nice, those are the main sensor components, now each with a good long cable so that I can connect them all the way down to the TNC. As you can see I have uh, marked the other end of each cable with uh, ground and 3 volts, red and black, so that I know how to connect them once they're installed inside the flute. Now the basic idea of this sensor is that these two components here will be supported within this structure opposite each other so that the light from the LED constantly falls onto the photodiode and then I will suspend just above the photodiode essentially like a flap of balloon material which then when you blow through this cavity will gradually bend and cover the photodiode uh, blocking the light from the LED and this is then what we can read on the analog pin in the microcontroller. So if I'm being uncharacteristically vague with the uh, details of the design here, it's because I'm literally making this up as I go along. So I'm going to use the hot glue gun around the pins of the components to try to isolate them 
more or less, and then I will put a layer of um, transparent tape on the inside of this channel here, and that should provide a functional seal uh, and protection against humidity. So here goes nothing. Okay, now that is starting to look kind of interesting. So this little piece that's stuck in here has the photodiode at the other end, and then on the other side here you can see the LED uh, sticking its head through there. So uh, they're right opposite each other, so now the light from the LED will fall onto the photodiode. So now the electronics are in place for the mouthpiece, but I still need to install the flap. So there's the piece of balloon material. It's actually surprisingly hard to cut this stuff. You need a very sharp pair of scissors. So you might think that this is much too floppy to use as a breath sensor, so that if I blow on it, it just flops around and doesn't give much stability. But if you only suspend a small piece out past the support, then all of a sudden it becomes more interesting. I also prepared this uh, small piece of cardboard here, which I'm going to uh, use to clamp the balloon material uh, inside the uh, mouthpiece. So let's try to assemble that. So uh, there's the first attempt. Hopefully you can see that uh, flap in there. It's large enough to bend when I blow on it, but not uh, so large that it just flops around. So I'm going to leave it like this for now, and I'm going to put a little dab of uh, hot glue to hold this piece in place, but not so much that I can't take it out afterwards if I have to change the size of the flap. I never intended for this instrument or any of the uh, Control Freak instruments to last for any length of time. I just need them to work for long enough to record another track for the Control Freak theme song. And I'm sure that this instrument will work for that and then some. Okay, so now final assembly of the mouthpiece. Okay, so as usual, kind of ugly, but I think it will be functional. So the only thing left to do before I can test the breath sensor and see if it works is to connect these to the Teensy via some resistors. But I'm not going to do that yet. I think I would prefer to pull all the cables from the keys down here, then attach the TNC and then attach all of the individual cables to the TNC. So again, I'm going to need some uh, longer cables for this. So these will have to be individual cables separated completely for the simple reason that uh, I won't be able to uh, insert them from the bottom. Instead I'll have to insert them each individually through a hole next to each key. So next step, individual female headers on these cables. I'm going to mark these with the key number in the simplest way that I can, which is just uh, key number one, one mark. Number two, two marks. Okay, so that's all of the cables inserted. Now what I need to do is strip the ends 
of uh, all of them and then uh, lay the bare cable across the painted keys here. I'm going to just hot glue each cable in place here at the edge of the key and then paint a little more conductive paint uh, across the uh, whole thing. So here we go. So now all the cables have been put into place and uh, numbered. So now I just need to make sure that I get a good connection between the end of the cable and the painted key. So I'm going to once again paint across the cable here with the conductive paint, let it dry and then uh, cover the whole thing with transparent tape. So before it dries completely I'm just going to put the tape on here so that I'm sure I can get the cables to conform to the uh, shape and make a nice uh, sort of flat surface. The paint will finish drying even if it's sealed underneath the tape because the cardboard itself is porous. <laughs> yeah, okay, so then that happened. So obviously the paint was still a little too wet, at least on these last two keys here. So I just squished it everywhere. Doesn't matter. Uh, the keys will still work even if they are really ugly. So while that paint finishes drying, I can just finish up the connections for the breath sensor, so that is the uh, photodiode and LED. These are connected uh, through these resistors here in exactly the same way as the uh, previous Control Freak video where I made a MIDI melodica. So if you want to know the details of how that works, uh, go check out that video and I'll just get down to business and connect these real quick. Sweet, that's both of the connectors for the components of the breath sensor. So the only thing that's left to do now as far as the physical build of the instrument is to install the TNC breakout board down here and then connect everything to it. There, that's the basic structure of it. So now I just need to uh, plug everything in. And although I, I know this looks really, really chaotic, um, remember that each cable here is marked with a number. And I know exactly what pins on the TNC are capacitive pins. And so I simply need to uh, plug them in to these pins here in order. Cable number one, two, three, four. Sweet! All done. The only thing that's left to do now is to bring it over to the computer and put some code in it and see if I can't make it work. So uh, let's do it. And once again it is coding time. Except that of course as usual I have cheated quite a lot and uh, finished all the code for the MIDI flute beforehand. I did however save some of the files along the way so that uh, I can show you step by step how I made it work. But first we need to plug it into the computer. And immediately the first thing that you'll notice is that the uh, LED is lit and uh, as you can tell I cut off a little bit more of the balloon material flap there uh, to get the correct sensitivity. Okay so the very first file is this one and as usual this is just a simple file which reads all of the sensors and prints them to serial. So these two arrays are just a mapping of pin numbers to specific sensors. And then these other two arrays will hold the actual values that I read off of the sensors. And of course here in the same file we have the breath sensor, which is on an analog pin. So then uh, we start the serial. Then we do an analog read on the breath sensor and we print that to serial. Then we have this for loop here, where we read all of the top keys on the instrument, print those to serial. And then another little for loop where I read the octave sensors, which is these two here. And then I print those to serial, and that's all there is to it. So let's try to upload that. Let's open up the serial monitor. So we're getting three lines of output here. 
and the first one should be the breath sensor so let's just see if we get a sensible reading from that it's currently reading roughly 680 that is awesome I'm getting a very nice gradual reading on the breath sensor starting up at 680 or so and then going down below 100 so I still need to map that within a MIDI range but we'll do that in the next file now for the keys let's first check the octave keys that is these two readings here and that works perfectly there's a reading of between about 1200 and 2500 or so on both of them now let's check the rest of the keys I need to go through these individually and make sure that they're all being read correctly. Nice, cool, sweet, perfect, awesome, excellent, nice, very nice, super nice, 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 nice. So even the two really ugly keys here at the bottom work perfectly fine. And so that concludes the first version of the code. Let's move on to the next one. The second version of the code is all about mapping the initial readings to some sensible values. Uh, so for that purpose I've introduced a few new variables here and uh, here and a threshold value for the keys. I've also introduced this uh, exponential filter here uh, which I will run all of the analog readings through. This is the same exact filter that I've used in previous episodes of Control Freak. As always in these instruments I keep track of the last reading of most of these sensors so that I can compare it to the latest reading and see if there's any change. So first the breath sensor. Analog read that, then put it through the exponential filter, then map it to a MIDI values, then limit it to MIDI values, and then serial print. Then in this for loop I read all of the top keys here, and uh, I map them to a binary value based on whether or not they're higher than the threshold. So now we will get a 1 or 0 value instead of the numeric value that we got before. The same goes for this other for loop which is for reading the octave keys in exactly the same manner. So let's try and upload that. Cool, let's open the serial monitor. And once again we're getting a 3 line output but now all of the readings are 0. So let's just once again try the breath sensor first of all. That really does work surprisingly well and is now correctly mapped between 0 and 127. So now let's have a look at the keys. First the octave keys. One octave is on and now the other octave is on and now both of them are activated. Perfect. Now the top keys. Just go through them one by one and check that they are correctly activated. Indeed they are. Every single one. Perfect. So all the sensors are now mapped correctly and the breath sensor is basically done. But we're still not ready to make music just yet. Not until we figure out how to turn all these binary key on off values into actual musical notes. So that's what the next file does. Let's open that. So first of all most of these variables are the same as in the last file. But now I've introduced an actual note value as well as an octave value which will help us to define the final note. But the main character in this whole file is this series of arrays here. Each array represents a single note, in this case it's a C sharp or a MIDI note 61, or in this case a B flat or a MIDI note 58. You see these numbers are different. I invented this technique for my open horn MIDI system project which is also a wind instrument. Because you see, on wind instruments the keys work differently than on say a piano for instance. Each key here does not correspond to a specific note. Instead, it is the combination of keys that are simultaneously pressed which makes the note itself. And this doesn't follow any mathematical logic as such. Instead, it is based on the logic of acoustics in which you close more and more holes, thus making the tube longer and longer and producing a lower and lower note. So the way this works is through this for loop right here. So you see we're reading uh, 15 different note combinations, which is these 15 different arrays. So for each of these arrays we compare its values to the actual uh, keys which are pressed at any one time. And then there is a quite complex logic which spits out a note value at the end, including uh, whether or not there is actually a new note to report. So I don't have time to get into all of the details of how that works in this video. But uh, I will, uh, at a later date in a video about the open horn media system itself, 
which uses this same logic as well as uh, a lot of other cool tricks. So uh, let's just try and upload that. Cool, let's open the serial monitor. Okay, so there's a change to the readout now. We still have three lines of output, but now you can see uh, one is a note value and it starts out at 61, which as I mentioned before is a C-sharp and that is perfect because C-sharp is the note that uh, this kind of instrument plays when you don't touch any keys at all. So uh, let's try to press some keys and see what we get. 59, that's a B, that is indeed correct. Let's try G. 55, 55 is G and this is the fingering for a G. Let's try G-sharp. 56, perfect, that's a G-sharp. The octave keys have not yet been incorporated into the key logic, but they're still being read, and so here we have one octave activated, the other one are both at the same time. Cool, that's it for this file. Let's close that down, and I'll show you the fourth and final file. So as usual, this is the file where I take all of the readings, mapping, and so on that I've accomplished in the earlier files, and then I turn it into a MIDI signal. So here is basically the same section as before, where I read the breadth sensor, but now, as well as outputting to serial, which I still do just so I can troubleshoot the code, I also output to USB MIDI. In this case, it is the uh, continuous controller number two, which is breadth control. Then we have these two for loops here, which are essentially the same as before. They read all the keys and the octaves. And then the key logic, which is also very similar to earlier, except that now, as well as outputting to serial, I also output to USB MIDI. So let's try and upload that. So now we have zero output on the serial monitor, which is perfect. You want to make sure when you make a MIDI controller that you're not just blasting out MIDI signal, uh, you want to limit it to only when you have new values to report. And while the breath sensor is not being activated on this instrument, I don't want it to send any MIDI at all. So perfect. Let's try to activate the breath sensor and see what happens. Suddenly we get the full set of output and we can see all the key values. Now it's stopped again, and there it goes again. So now I can just select any fingering here, and the flute is now outputting the note G to MIDI, while simultaneously controlling the volume via continuous controller 2 from the readings on the mouthpiece. So that all seems to be working perfectly. I think it's time to open up Yoshimi and see if we can make some noise. Let's do it. So as usual I am using the Yoshimi synthesizer, running it through Jack, and I've already connected the Teensy MIDI port to Yoshimi. I'm also using one of the presets that I've prepared for my open horn MIDI system, which work perfectly well for the flute here, as it is also based on continuous controller number two for volume control. Moment of truth. So um, first thing I'm going to do is just try to play a C sharp, which has zero keys activated. That works great. I'm not touching either of the octave keys, which gives uh, the highest octave that this instrument can play. The breath sensor is surprisingly responsive and sensitive for being made out of cardboard and bits of balloon. Um, so that's awesome. Okay, let's try to play some notes and see how that goes. So now let's try to combine the uh, thumb on the octave keys with the other fingerings. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. <laughs> one thing that I would change if I were to make another one of these uh, would be to have some kind of tactile feedback on the keys, like some kind of little bump that would mark the position of each key, because the position that I play this in doesn't really allow me to look at my fingers and see what I'm doing, so uh, some tactile feedback would be very helpful, but uh, nonetheless it works really great. <laughs> So there you go, fully functional MIDI flute, possibly the first in the world. I certainly haven't been able to find any other MIDI flutes anywhere on the great expanse of the interwebs. Uh, and if it's not the first in the world, then it's definitely the first in the world made 
mostly out of cardboard. So the only thing left for me to do now is to actually practice this instrument here a little bit before I attempt to record the next voice for the Control Freak theme song. But I'm not going to make you sit through that whole practice part. Instead I'm going to cut to the music now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the Control Freak, then like this video and subscribe to the Continuum Lab channel where I post content like this every week. While you're there, check out the Open Horn MIDI system, my main project here in the lab. See you next time.